What does Disney's Willow have in common with the formerly named HBO Max's Westworld and Raised by Wolves? They have all been removed from their streaming platforms by their respective streaming services. So if you were curious and you wanted to find out if Willow was really that bad and was it cancelled because of that after one season, or you finally want to find out the buzz about Westworld that you waited this long, well you can't, you can't anymore. Well, at least not by subscribing at the streaming services where they were created for and originally streamed. Welcome back to the Tone Show. Today we're asking the question, why are streaming services yanking our favorite shows away? Let's talk about it. <laughs> Now we all know that Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, Disney Plus, Paramount Plus, AMZ Plus, Peacock, HBO Max, HBO Max, 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 Max Plus Plus. You're getting, this is getting way out of hand, okay? This, this is getting ridiculous at this point. Okay, we all know that streaming services have completely transformed the way we consume our favorite entertainment. There's no question about that. They brought us a treasure trove of shows and movies right at our fingertips. But sometimes we're left confused when we go searching for our favorite show on our watch list and it's no longer there, it's missing, it's nowhere to be found on the service. Why are they removing our shows? There are several reasons why these streaming services are removing our favorite shows from their platforms. Let's start with the most common one. Those sneaky licensing agreements. Streaming platforms acquire licenses from production companies and content creators to offer us incredible shows. But guess what? These agreements often come with expiration dates, limited terms. So when the license is up, the streaming service has to go back to the negotiating table with the content creator creator or the license holder. Sometimes those negotiations hit a roadblock, leading us to losing our beloved shows. They vanish into thin air. Sometimes the characters themselves in the contracts are licensed and they must be returned back to the original creator or license holder after some type of contractual agreement has been met or a certain amount of time has passed. Think back to Netflix, they had the most epic Marvel streaming shows, but now all those shows are no longer available on Netflix. You can stream them on Disney Plus. As the name suggests, it's owned by the Walt Disney Company, who also owns Marvel Entertainment. So not only can you stream Daredevil on Disney Plus, but a new series starring the same Daredevil and the same actor will be coming to Disney Plus soon. Another reason for a show's removal is good old greener pastures. When I've heard of streaming services stampede into the market, competition is fierce and content creators must hightail it over to the rival platform with a more lucrative offer to offer. That means waving a goodbye to your favorite shows. Think about The Office or Seinfeld. They continue to be available on different services, whoever can foot the larger bill. In the case of Westworld and Raised by Wolves, Warner Brother Discovery, the parent company of Max, made a deal with Roku to bring various shows on their platform to Roku's Tubi's ad-supported streaming channel. This would provide them with revenue from a show that they already created. And the cost cutting is no surprise that it's happening over there. Think about the controversial canceling of the Batgirl film. Well, actually don't. Don't think about that. I don't want you to get agitated. But it's no surprise that they're doing this to make a little bit of money from something they already created. Now, as far as Willow, it's no surprise either that a show that was canceled or failed to garner an audience. Not a positive one anyway. <laughs> a lot of shots are fired, right? But I couldn't find where it's going actually. I can't find what service it's going to. But removing a show from a catalog can also provide revenue to a service. By removing residuals to talent and not having to pay for intellectual property or licensing fees. Not offering the show itself can be a money saver in those respects. Think about it. It kind of takes you to the current writer's strike. Because imagine if you worked on a show like Willow for example. And you're expecting a residual check. And that check never Never comes because the show's no longer available on the service. It's good for the streamer because th they can just write it off. Think about Warner Brothers Discovery writing off the backer movie in their taxes. But it screws over the creative talent and the cast and whoever worked on the show. It's also the question if we solely depend on streaming services to move forward with providing a shows online and a show only has a small audience, that show can never be discovered in the future. All those cult classic DVDs and movies and TV shows that, that we love today would never be discovered because they would never be available. They would be removed. The future is basically going to be a black hole of media. So if something doesn't garner an audience right away, it might be removed from the internet. 
and we might have a basically an audience that's never there for us and that's big especially for a channel like mine that depends on people going online and discovering streaming shows and then coming to youtube and finding out where they were cancelled <laughs> Put it in the comments. What do you think about this happening and about streaming services in general, moving shows? Some of these are your favorite shows. Put it in the comments. Let me know what you're feeling. Leave me a like. Drop me a comment. Tone Show. Ow. Oh.